Hi, my name is Jeff Most, and I'm an engineer here at Keysight. Customers have told us some of their biggest signal integrity measurement challenges are removing the effects of the probes and fixtures that they need to use when connecting to a DUT that doesn't have standard instrument connectors at some of the ports. They tell us that what they really want are the measurement results of just the DUT and not the DUT plus those probes and fixtures. In the video today, I'm going to show you an easy method of accomplishing exactly that when making measurements with a TDR. And there's three steps to the process. The first step is to calibrate the TDR. The second step is to use the calibrated TDR to characterize the probes and fixtures that you need to use to connect to your DUT. And the last step is to measure the DUT plus the probes and fixtures and then remove the effects of those probes and fixtures through de-embedding. And this process works for a time domain measurement like an impedance profile and frequency domain measurements like insertion loss or return loss or crosstalk. And while the process that I'm going to show you is pretty easy to implement, the results are still quite accurate. Let's take a close look at the DUT. It is a two-port device with no connectors. Because there are no connectors, to characterize the device, I've built it into this validation board with a connector and a connector launch on each port. The actual DUT is this small device inside the red box in the center of the validation board. Also on the validation board, I've built a replica of the fixture with connectors. To properly characterize the DUT, I will need to characterize the fixture and then de-embed the fixture at each port of the DUT from the combined measurement of the DUT plus fixtures. Here you can see the DUT that I'll actually measure, and by de-embedding the fixtures, I can determine the measurement results of just the DUT without the fixtures. Let's take a close look at the instrumentation we're going to be using to make measurements today. This is the Keysight 8600D DCAX mainframe, and this is the N1055A 50 gigahertz TDR TDT module. This one happens to have four channels, but you can also get them with two channels. And each channel has a remote head like this one with a 1.85 millimeter connector at the end. The three steps in the process we're going to follow today is, first, I'll set up the TDR to make a two-port measurement since our DUT has two ports. Next, I will use this ECAL module, DC to 67 gigahertz, to calibrate the TDR system right at the connector of the remote head. So that's where our reference plane will be. Now, an important note is, you can use the TDR to make measurements without calibration, but to maximize accuracy like we want to do today and to take advantage of advanced features like de-embedding and AFR, you need to do a calibration. The second step is we'll use the calibrated TDR to characterize our fixtures using a new tool available on the TDR called Automatic Fixture Removal, or AFR. In this case, one port AFR. And uh, just a note, Keysight introduced one port AFR a couple of years ago as part of our N1930B PLTS software. And there will be some more information at the end of this video that shows you where you can get some additional details on AFR if you would like them. The final step we're going to go through today is using the TDR to measure the DUT plus fixtures and probes and then remove the effects of those fixtures and probes with de-embedding. The first step in our process today is to set up the TDR for a two-port measurement and then perform a TDR calibration at the reference plane, which is the connector on the remote head. So the best way to start is just with a, an instrument default setup. Next, we'll go into TDR mode, and we will choose a two-port DUT, since that's what our device is that we're going to measure today. At this point, you're ready to make measurements with your TDR. You can turn the steps on and off with these controls. You can turn the receivers on and off with these controls. But if you want the best accuracy, and if you want to be able to use advanced features like AFR and de-embedding, you need to perform a TDR calibration. So we can select a new calibration. There's several steps here. The first one is to just confirm the setup is what you want, and it is. Then you have a choice on the type of calibration you're going to do. Today we're going to do eCal, so we select that. We have to answer some questions about the type of connectors on our DUT, and we have 2.4 millimeter males. We set up the averaging we want, and that's good. And then we can start the calibration measurement wizard. This tells us where to connect the heads on our eCal module, which we will do next, and then we can begin to measure. 
Now that we've calibrated the TDR, we're going to use the calibrated TDR to characterize our fixture. And we could start back in the DUT setup. We call up the de-embedding menu, and that lets us launch the automatic fixture removal wizard here. This asks us a few questions about the fixture, and it is a single-ended fixture, and we're going to measure one port because you only have access to one port. This lets us tell AFR whether we're going to be measuring an open or a short, and our fixture is open. And finally, it's time to make the measurement. So we click Measure, and now we can just save the file. Essentially, one port AFR measures from one port of the device, where you would typically just get return loss, or S11. AFR extracts the full two port S parameters, the S2P file. And a good practice to see how effective that extraction was is to look at the return loss and insertion loss of the S2P file that AFR created. I've just put the insertion loss and return loss of the fixture on the screen. And the thing to look for is the frequency where the return loss and insertion loss are the same because the AFR model does not work well beyond any frequency where the insertion loss and return loss are the same. All the way up to 50 gigahertz, the insertion loss and return loss don't ever touch each other. So this extraction worked well to beyond 50 gigahertz. If you're performing this and you run into a problem where your insertion loss and return loss graphs cross each other at a low frequency, there's a couple of alternatives you can do. Instead of just measuring into an open, you can measure into both an open and a short and you may get a better model. And if that doesn't work for you, the best thing to do is to not use one port AFR but to make a two times through and characterize that. So the last step is to measure the DUT with the fixtures connected and to de-embed the fixtures. This is our setup. I have my two TDR heads connected to my DUT. First, let's go and take a look at the measurement results that we want. And we're looking for some frequency domain data. For those of you who have seen the DUT, you may have already figured out that it's actually a bandpass filter. So we just want to take a look at the insertion loss, S21. And there it is. You can see the pass band at about 25 gigahertz. And this is the insertion loss of our DUT with the fixtures in place. So now let's de-embed those fixtures. We go back to the setup and into our de-embed setup. We just need to now find the S parameter file for our fixtures. So we're going to load that S parameter file, which is on the desktop. We're going to select that. And now I can put this for each port. Port 1 of the fixture is the connectorized port, which is connected to the TDR. So over on this port, we need to change the configuration of the fixture. So port 1 is connected to the TDR, and port 2 is connected to the DUT. And it's very easy to reverse those. So there you go. By checking this box, we can remove the fixtures. By unchecking it, we'll have the fixtures in place. Let's leave it unchecked for now. We'll just slide this out of the way. And you can see our insertion loss. I can just save that. So there we have the insertion loss saved with the fixtures in place. And now we will de-embed the two fixtures. And you can see the difference. I have much less insertion loss in the passband. Using fixtures and probes with the TDR is fast, easy, and accurate if you have a high-performance instrument, a robust calibration process, and AFR so you can characterize probes or fixtures with non-standard instrument connectors. If you already have a DCAX-based TDR system like this one, you can add AFR with a user-installable license. And if you don't have one but would like to learn more, please contact your local field engineer. Thanks for spending time with us today.